Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back and uh, let us continue the discussion on the piston and propeller engine and we have talked about what is the basic engine type and their arrangements and all this. So we just started taking the assumption for reciprocating engine and now we will look at the thermodynamic analysis of those engines. So this is what we have talked about this uh, air standard. Uh, for air standard analysis the assumption and things like that and uh, then what we will do we will talk about two cycles here one is the auto cycle and other one is the diesel cycle. So, auto cycle is for spark ignition engine and this one for the compression ignition analysis. Now, there are specific heat of air are function of actually temperature like C p and C v and uh, the temperature within the cylinders actually vary a lot. So, and also the ratio of the specific heat is gamma which is. So, the to, to simplify the analysis what we will do. So, that means, in cylinder in realistically C p C v they are function of temperature. So, gamma also becomes function of temperature or something like that, but to make it simple for simple analysis we will say gamma to be constant and we will use some average value of 1.35 and something like that and also we will use the constant C p value which is something right 1.108 kilo joule per kg Kelvin and C b is 0.821 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, R would be C p minus C b which is 0.287 kilo joule per kg Kelvin and gamma is C p by C b is 1.35. So, these are what we are going to use. So, let us start with the auto cycle and uh, first this is a cycle for the spark ignition engine. So, this was named in after Nicholas A. Otto who built 1876 I think a four stroke engine and successfully in Germany. In most park ignition engine or SI engine the piston executes four complex stroke, two mechanical within the cylinder and the crankshaft complex two revolutions. So, these are called four stroke internal combustion engine. So, the typical P V diagram. So, let us say this is a state from where it goes here that is state 0 or T d c. Then from here this goes like this, then this, then like this and comes like that. So, this is 1, 5, 2, 3, 4. So, this is where heat is out, combustion in, then this process is isentropic and that is same for this guy also and this is the bottom dead center. Okay. And then 
same thing if you put back in the T s diagram, this is 2, 3, 4 like this. So, 1, 5, 2, 3, 4. So, this is V constant process where Q in, V constant process Q out. So, this is the P V and T S diagram. Now, first between 0 1 process, say this is a constant pressure intake stroke. So, and the pressure at the intake takes place at P naught with the intake valve open and exhaust valve closed, the piston makes an intake stroke to draw a fresh charge. And it could be a mixture of fuel and air for SI engine into the cylinder. So, what it gives P 1 would be P naught. So, let us say W 0 1 would be P naught V 1 minus V naught. So, the this one is the V is specific volume. Okay. So, now move to process 1 to 2 that is isentropic compression stroke. So, with both the valves closed, the piston undergoes a compression stroke and raising the temperature and pressure of the charge. So, this requires an input from the piston to the cylinder. So, what happens T 2 would be T 1 V 1 by V 2 gamma minus 1 which is T 1 V 1 by V 2 gamma minus 1 T 1 R c to the power gamma minus 1 and P 2 is P 1 V 1 by V 2 gamma which is P 1 which is to the power gamma P 1 R c to the power gamma. So, what we have the specific work output would be P 2 V 2 minus P 1 V 1 by 1 minus gamma. So, we can replace that with R T 2 minus T 1 divided by 1 minus gamma which is U 1 minus U 2 this is change in internal energy or delta U C B T 1 minus T 2. Now, the process 2 to 3, this is constant volume heat addition process or the combustion. So, here what will happen? We will have um, the T 3 would be T max P 3 would be P max, V 3 would be V 2, V T D C and 2 to 3 would be 0. Now, specific heat is added that Q dot in. So, Q 2 to 3 is Q in which is C V T 3 minus T 2 which is U 3 minus U 2 and the Q 2 to 3 it Q in which is M dot F Q heating value into eta C which is M dot F C B 
t3 minus so let us say m dot m which is mixture. So, that we can write m dot a plus m dot f into C v t 3 minus t 2. So, what we can write the q heating value into eta c would be air fuel ratio plus 1 which is 1 plus f C v t 3 minus t 2. So, here q h b is the heating value of the fuel and a f is the air fuel ratio. So, which is m dot a by m dot f. So, now after this combustion what will happen the gas mixture will leave uh, having the maximum pressure and the temperature. So, this will be towards the end of the compression stroke. Now, the fourth stage this is process 3 to 4 which is again an isentropic power or expansion stroke. Okay. Now, it follows the compression stroke during the gas mixture expands and work is done and all the valves are closed. So, what we get T 4 is T 3 V 3 by V 4 gamma minus 1 T 3 V 3 by V 4 gamma minus 1 T 3 R C gamma minus 1 same way we can write P 4 equals to P 3 gamma V 3 by V 4 gamma R C to the power gamma and Q 3 4 is 0. So, the specific work in 3 to 4 is P 4 V 4 minus P 3 V 3 1 minus gamma which is T 4 minus T 3 1 minus gamma. So, you can write C V Now, we have process 4 to 5, this is again constant volume heat rejection process or sort of exhaust blow down. Now, the exhaust valve is open and intake valve is closed. So, we get V 5 is V 4 is V bottom dead center and this would be 0. Here specific heat rejection is Q out. So, V uh, T V C V minus T 5 minus T 4 T 1 minus T 4 which is u 5 minus u 4. So, q 4 minus 5 is q out m dot m c v m dot m c v t 1 minus t 4. Now, we have the last process which is 5 to 0 which is again constant pressure exhaust stroke at P naught and this piston executes an exhaust stroke 
in which the burned gases are purged from the cylinder through the open exhaust valve. So, here we have P 5 which is P 1 and P naught and specific work is P naught V naught minus V 5 V naught minus V 1. So, we can find out the thermal efficiency of the auto cycle. So, thermal efficiency of auto cycle. So, um, since the auto cycle is executed in a closed system, we can disregard the changes in the kinetic and potential energies. So, the energy balance could be written like uh, W net is Q in minus Q out in terms of kilo joule per kg with W net is Q in minus Q out which is U 3 minus U 2 minus U 4 minus U 1. So, the thermal efficiency of auto cycle is defined W net by Q in which is 1 minus Q out by Q in 1 minus U 4 minus U 1 by U 3 minus U 2 1 minus C V T 4 minus T 1 by T 3 minus T 2. So, what we get 1 minus T 4 minus T 1 T 3 minus T 2 1 minus T 1 T 4 by T 1 minus 1 by T 2 T 3 by T 2 minus 1. Now, since the process 1 to 2 and 3 to 4 are isentropic and V 2 equals to V 3 and V 4 equals to V 1. So, what we can write T 1 by T 2 is V 2 by V 1 gamma minus 1 which is V 3 by V 4 gamma minus 1 which is T 4 by T 3. So, we can rearrange that like T 4 by T 1 is T 3 by T 2 and now if we put this back here again what we get 1 by R c to the power gamma minus 1 where R c is V 1 by V 2 that is V max by V minimum. So, so, thermal efficiency is dependent on the compression ratio and obviously, the heat ratio. So, if you plot that for different heat ratio like this is um, let us say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 this is R c and this is eta T h this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 4, 5. So, like that, so it goes like that. So, it just uh, different values of gamma if you increase that this one start with 1.3 something like that. So, that is a typical curve that one can see. So, from here one can uh, what one can see that the the thermal efficiency curve is uh, steep at low compression ratio, but flats out when uh, out starting with a higher compression ratio beyond 8 or something like that. So, the increase in thermal efficiency is quite 
with the compression ratio is not a pronounced at high compression ratios. That means, when you go beyond certain compression ratio, it is not necessarily that efficiency will increase further, but at the lower um, uh, RC as we increase it, it increases. Now, for a particular given compression ratio, this is let us say gamma 1.4 and gamma 1.667. So, the monoatomic gas like uh, argon or helium, they will have the higher com thermal efficiency compared to in the heat ratio of 1.3 in the same. Now, the typically the working fluids in actual engine contains larger molecules such as carbon dioxide and the specific heat ratio also decreases with temperature which is one of the reason that actual cycle will always have lower than the theoretical ideal auto cycle. Second for a given compression ratio, the thermal efficiency of a actual SI engine is less than that ideal auto cycle due to irreversible. So, that is obvious because what we have got here is the ideal one, but theoretical one, but actually there would be irreversibilities. And typically, the SI engine efficiency would be about 25 to 30 percent. Now, we can find out now power uh, generation and fuel consumption. So, the torque generated in the piston engine is normally measured with a dynamometer, the engine is clamped on a test bed, and so the torque which is this is the torque exerted by the engine is F into B. So, the power which is delivered by the engine and absorbed by the dynamometer is let us say this is the power P is T cross omega which will be 2 pi n T. So, now one can find that the sorry this is force F into B torque. So, the value of the engine power is called the brake power which is P B that would be 2 pi n T into 10 to the power minus 3 which is kilowatt. So, the indicated power is correlated and you can see in a area diagram of a PV area diagram. Let us say this is what happens at the intake stroke, uh, then it goes back here, uh, goes like that and comes like that. Uh, so, this is bottom dead center, top dead center, this is exhaust, this is intake. So, what happens? So, this is let us say this is area A, this is B and this is C. So, you can see how the power is the indicated work per cycle per cylinder W C i which will be P d v and the net indicated work per cycle of the cylinder which is area A minus area B then the power per cylinder is related to the indicated power. So, per cylinder would be indicated per cylinder 
indicated power W C i into n by n r, where n r is the number of crank revolution for four stroke engine n r equals to 2 for two stroke engine. So, this is 2 for four stroke 1 for two, 2 stroke engine. Okay. So, this power is the indicated power and then uh, what we get W C i is P i n r by n. Now, for 4 stroke engine this is W C i is 2 P i by n and for 2 stroke W C i is P i by n. Now, the brake power can be related with the indicated power. So, indicated power is the brake power plus P f and P f is the power consumed in overcoming the friction of the bearing. So, driving accessories induction exhaustion stroke. So, this is the power which has been used to some of these uh, things to operate. Okay. So, and then eta mechanical efficiency would be ratio of brake power by indicated power. Typically, this is around 90 percent for modern automotive engines, where the revolution uh, is um, around 1800 to 2400 rpm or 75 percent for the maximum speed limit. Now, there would be another parameter which to describe this engines are the M E P which is mean effective pressure. So, the mean effective pressure is the fictitious pressure that if it is acted on the piston during the entire power stroke it produces the same amount of net work that produced during the actual cycle. So, which means W net would be M E P into piston area into stroke. So, that is M E P into displacement volume. So, M A P would be W net by displacement volume, which is V max minus V min, which is in W net V max minus V min. So, one can see in a PV curve like this, where let us say these are the two ends. Uh, so, the cycle lies there. So, here it goes, comes back. So, that is W net and this is M E P and this if we look at the so this is T D C that means V min, this is V max. So, this is M E P 
into V max minus V min. So, that is also W net. So, this area and this is where the cylinder lies and that is the bottom dead center. So, this is uh, BDC. So, various mean effective pressure can be defined using in terms of uh, like if it is indicated work then I MEP it is indicated mean effective pressure which is W C i by V d. So, we will uh, kind of using this uh, mean effective pressure you can uh, define the other parameters and uh, we can uh, look at those details in the next class.